All right, friends, let's get this party started. So I've got my page, pages, page gessoed, and I've got some burnt sienna out here, and I'm mixing it with a little bit of gesso. And I'm just getting my base layers down. Um, just trying to get some movement on the page. I'm using some gesso and some unbleached titanium in that mixture. And I want the variation of lights, whites, and a little bit darker. And I'm doing all of these in real time. This is my actual time, without the exception of dry time, just to show you that these pages did not take long at all and don't have to, and that we can just show up and make a mess and play and have fun. So I'm rubbing away, uh, which is a technique I do often, which I love because it does a couple of things. It creates texture and it's kind of a reverse. So I get some lights and some darks and some contrast. And then of course I'm going to stamp with it because you just never know. And the thing is, is that you can always cover it up if you don't like it. I'm smoothing out some of the rougher areas so just so that I don't have kind of a hard line I've got black gesso on my sponge and I'm just stenciling it out. Now I could have used my tissue paper as well, but my surface was still relatively flat, so I thought I'd give it a try. Fairly clean stencil image with the exception of a few spots, which I'm okay with. And of course I'm going to stamp it out no matter what I get because you always get something interesting. And I'm working from corner to corner to balance the page and keep the eye moving across the page. Coming back in with some unbleached titanium and I just want to kind of push things back. Blend things in, integrate everything so it feels um, cohesive and all parts are together. Now that I've got those layers down, I'm going to, I've got some scraps of paper, literally just scraps from my desk and my flower stencil that we talked about in the first video um, that we embellished. And a lot of the things that I'm referring to are some of the things that we went over in that first video. So if you haven't seen that, you'll probably want to watch that. And what I'm basically doing is I'm framing the the focal point. I'm leading the eye to the focal point. I've chosen neutral papers so that it doesn't detract from the focal point while still creating interest and some texture. I'm using fluid matte medium 
to put all of my papers down. These are nice and light papers, so I don't have to use my matte gel. And you can see that my papers are the leading lines to the focal point. And I want to have some papers on the other side too, so that it feels full and again, balanced. And so now I want to integrate those papers into the piece, push those back a little bit. And I happen to get a, <clears throat> a little bit of black on my brush and I went with it. These are the things that happen as we create and nothing is, I feel like it's always serendipity. And so I thought, well, all right, I got black in there. What can I do with it? Can I pull it back? Can I create a pattern? How can I make it work? because I really liked the page, how it was, how it was looking. And so I didn't want to scrap it. And the thing is, is that most of the time, um, these kinds of things happen and we can really kind of change it. So I'm like, I'm, I'm embracing the black. It wasn't what I had planned. And I, and I'm pulling that back through the stencil. And this is one of my favorite parts of this page and I've I'm using all of the stencils the new stencils that are in the shop so of course I'm going to bring some of that black I put a little bit of raw umber in there to kind of tone it down just a little bit and I'm going to bring that all the way up to the top again moving the eye around balancing it out and look at it just looks gorgeous like I had planned that stamping it out and I loved those lines so much that I wanted just a tiny little silhouette of lines up there So now that I've got that down, or the, that paint down, I'm going to put my focal point down. And again, I've I've got a I grabbed a scrap of paper off my table, and um, it's framing the focal point.
I've got a little bit of prism violet out and violet and burnt sienna look really good together plus it's also close to the color that's in the flowers and so I'm watering that down and just kind of being free putting it down here and there and I thought I'd bring some of those dots up really messily and I loved it And I'm bringing that color all the way into the flowers to connect everything so that it feels like one piece, one big picture. Instead of bits and pieces here and there, I'm creating the vignettes and then connecting them. And I thought I would try this, this pattern on here because of the, the floral and the softness of it. And um, this color here was actually a little too light, so I just darkened it up. And the point of all of this is to show you that nothing is perfect, but in the imperfection of all of it is the beauty. And it doesn't take much to get here and to do something. The, this. All of these took me about 25 minutes. And our journal pages are just for us. So this is the place to play, to experiment, to try new things, to run with the black paint that happens to get on your page. And um, you'll be surprised at how that freedom can turn into some beautiful journal pages. Coming back in and adding just a little bit of raw umber on my flowers to kind of bring that color all the way through the page. It adds a little bit of pop to the flowers so they're not quite so soft. You know, we've got some bold colors and things like that on the rest of the page. And so I wanted it to, to feel a little bit older than it did. I've got a little bit of acrylic ink and sepia. And I'm just going to spray that out. And my paint on my page isn't completely dry and I wanted that. I wanted it to kind of all mix together. And again, I'm bringing that color onto my focal point to connect it. I'm tapping some of that up just to soften it <clears throat> just a little bit. Doing some sepia and some white sprinkles. Sprinkles are always, always good. Now that that's fully dry, I'm coming back in with just a few. I mean, this is the pop that it needed this is my tissue paper that I've stenciled on in white and I can choose just the right amount for it and put it down. There's a lot of texture happening on there right now so the tissue paper was perfect. A nice clean image 
and it goes transparent and it was the just the perfect pop of white that background for the flowers is white and so i'm bringing that white again all the way through the piece And you can see now that the tissue papers, it's not even fully dry yet, how it goes transparent and how it's that pop of white is perfect. Now I'm gonna start my shading process and really kind of um, give some weight to my focal point. And I'm continuing those leading lines to my focal point, drawing the eye in. I'll add some additional shading around the edges just to, again, give it that weight, some depth there. Just a few um, mark making tick marks, just to again kind of connect everything together. I did some in white as well with a um, white soft pastel pencil. And then of course a few scratchy lines. And you'll notice I'm holding my pencil at the end of the pencil so that I have less control when I make my scratchy lines. And now it's time for my word. This is again one of the new stencils in the shop. I love this. These are all my favorite words. And I'm trying to find the right spot. And I didn't want to put, I, I wanted it to feel connected to the focal point. And so I started on the other side and I thought, no, it's too distracting to go over there. It, um, I want that to feel as part of the focal point. So I put it next to my flower. And I got a clean image, which was a little risky. There's a little bit of bleed through. I could have stenciled it onto tissue paper like we did in um, the first video, but I wanted to try and see if I could get it to work. And it worked out fine. And I'm just kind of connecting some of the spots. And now I will do my shading around my my edges and my or my leaves and my vines, my flowers. I'll add some additional marks on my flowers. And that is it for our first project for this week. So I hope you come back tomorrow for another wonderful journal page. I love every single one that I've done for this week for the new stencils. Um, just in love with them and had fun just playing and taking, you know, just taking whatever I had and making it work and doing it quickly. You know, 30 minutes 
no thought, just enjoying the process and relaxing. So I hope this encourages you to do the same. All right, my friends, I will see you tomorrow.